Hey guys, so I'm logged in with two accounts right here, Bob2 and Bob3, and I want to invite Bob3 to my GG team. But right now it doesn't show me the little button, even though Bob2 actually created the team. So we're going to be fixing that in today's video. Now, one way I was showing in the last video to do this is to create an admin field right here and make this a boolean. But I said that was pretty hacky, but thinking about it more, I think it works out pretty well because what this field represents is whoever fetches this team object, whether they're the admin or not. So we're gonna fix it so it works with fetching the admin here, which is really easy. All we have to do is in our user over here is say uh, raw true. And the reason why we have to do raw is true is our team does not have a um, admin field. We're actually getting the admin field from our member object or our member model. So we just put raw true so it doesn't pass back a SQLized object, but we just get the JSON data back. Okay. So now we're going to fetch our teams, and one of the fields will be um, the admin field, which we get because we're selecting all the fields from teams and members. Also, as a quick side note, Visual Studio Code, their new um, version, lets you have two folders open, two projects. So I have the client and the server up in this single um, uh, window so now I no longer have to switch between multiple okay so now and then I'm just on the front end here I'm just gonna grab the admin alright so there's no error here so we we're able to fetch it good the next thing we want to do is actually determine whether they're an admin or not and right now we are I'll show you how we're doing that so we can close the server and that's gonna be over here in our routes and actually I think it's in our sidebar container because we're yep we're passing in the team and then we're passing in is owner and is owner we were checking um, against the token that was stored but we don't have to do that so is owner here is going to be team.admin and we can get rid of that and we actually don't even need to decode this token to get the username anymore because we are grabbing the username from me so we can pass in the username here as a prop to our sidebar and we can delete all this. So in our view team over here, we don't have to console log me anymore. So one of the things we want is teams and then the username and the username we're gonna pass to the sidebar over here. So me, oops username is equal to username all right cool so let's see all right now we're able to see this invite people link here because we're the admin so let's invite a person so I'm gonna invite Bob3 at Bob.com copy that add the user cannot add members to the team all right so this is something we have to fix so if we look at our back end here, so our server, and we go to our resolver where we're doing this. So is it in the users? No, it should be in the teams. Add team member. Okay, so the way we're doing this is we're first grabbing the team and basically checking if they're the owner of the team. Um, but right now, we no longer are storing the information there. We're storing it in, uh, the data or our members table so we need to fetch that instead so we have the team ID and we have the user ID so instead of fetching this we're gonna grab the member so models dot member dot find one where the team ID is equal to the team ID passed and the user ID is equal to user dot ID okay so that should and then we're gonna pass the member promise here so member promise and we'll grab the member so here we need to check um, whether the member is an admin so member dot admin so if they're not an admin then we display this error measure error message otherwise we can continue and then we're going to create a, a new member based on the user that we want to add so let's try this again so add the user and awesome it looks like it worked okay so if i refresh over here we should see 
hey look we are part of GG now and Bob 3 is not an admin so we don't see the invite people link perfect and we don't see the create channels link either and now they can talk to each other if they want to that still works just fine so cool I think we got everything working let's actually let's create a channel um, I don't remember if that still works so let's do a random channel create and it doesn't look like it got created let's refresh nope so I believe we're doing the same thing where we're checking if they're an owner so if we look at the channel so team knows how we're doing checking if the team is an owner so instead of doing that we're gonna just check member so member and then we're going to say if member.admin. So if they're not an admin. And the way we're finding it is we're going to grab team ID is equal to the args passed in. And then the user ID is equal to user.id. And user ID is coming from the context. Okay. So let's give this a try again, creating the channel. So random. Create. And cool, our random channel is created. Now if we refresh here, we can see it. Okay. Awesome. So that works nicely. So we want to now come back to what we were working on before, and that was in our back end. That was locking down the subscriptions endpoint here. So now that we have our member object with we can check whether they're an admin or not, um, we can fetch that user. Now I don't want to put this logic here like I originally said, and the reason for that is we could have multiple subscriptions. Um, and some subscriptions we want um, them to be logged in or we want them to be the team member whereas some other subscriptions we might want to open it up so instead of putting the logic here where we really want to put it is in our where we're creating the subscription so if we come over here oops that's our schema so here with this with filter the first thing is a function and this function is just like any other function we have over here or a resolver it has a parent args and context so what we can do is pass to this context whether they're a user um, and let the the resolver itself decide whether who they want to allow access to um, so let's close some of these windows we don't need we don't need that anymore that we only really care about index all right so instead of throwing an error whether we don't get a user anymore we're not going to do that at all so here we're just going to return an empty object and here we're going to return a user so I'm going to say deconstruct the user and return the user and I'm going to do the same thing here so return user is equal to new tokens dot user okay. and then here I'm going to just return an empty object and oh that's unreachable code so I don't need it then so now notice how we're not throwing any errors in our onConnect. Instead, all we're doing is passing a user object, um, which this is basically like context, in whether we need it or not. And we're also going to pass in models. So pass in models. So models is coming from up here. If you remember, we're importing it. And that's similar to how we're doing the context here. We're going to creating a context for our subscriptions. So now in the subscription resolver, I can check whether I have a user and then decide whether I want to allow only users or if anyone can. So in my message over here, I can actually use the requires auth if I want to. So requires auth dot create resolver. And what that'll do is that will stop anyone from logging in that's not a user, right? So perfect. So that was easy and we're able to reuse this that we've already used. And now here, we don't just want to stop them from logging in if they are a user. So we have models and user here. We also want to stop them if they are not a uh, part of the team, right? 
if I'm logged in, I shouldn't be able to listen to messages from teams that I'm not a part of. So what you can do is return this at the bottom, but here you can do check if part of the team, right? Oops, um, looks like, okay, we need to move that here. There we go. And I'm gonna just put a console.log here. That way I can save the code without it reformatting. So here we wanna do a basically check whether the team, the user is part of the team. Um, so right now we currently have in our args, if we look at our schema, we are passing a channel ID. And we also have the user's ID here. So really what we wanna check is whether they are a member of the current team. But we don't have a team ID, but we have a channel ID. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first uh, grab the uh, team. So I'm gonna make this an async function. And we're gonna say const team, or sorry, not team, channel is equal to await models dot uh, channel dot find one and we're going to say where and then the ID is equal to channel ID so we're getting the channel which we got here and then we know your user ID here and then from the channel if we remember one of our uh, fields of channel uh, is a team ID so what we can do is we can search a user so we're going to say const uh, member is equal to await models dot member dot find one and we're going to say where and we're going to say team id is equal to the id that this channel was a part of so channel dot team id and then user id matches the current user so we're checking whether the current user is part of the team which they're requesting channel access to or listening to all messages that happen in that channel so now we're just going to do an if statement. If not member, we're going to throw new error. And we're just going to say, you have to be a member of the team to subscribe to its messages. And let's double quote this. There. All right. So Let's see, this is our log for our server. Doesn't look like we're getting any errors. Now let's make sure these guys can still subscribe okay. So let's refresh, refresh, make sure we don't get any errors. Let's look in the logs here. Um, unhandled, so async.next is not a function. Oh, are we returning this? Okay, good, we're returning this. Um, I'm thinking it's not liking this um, create resolver, so I'm gonna get rid of that real quick and make sure, see what it doesn't like. So refresh. Um, async iterator is not a function. So we're getting a, an error here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment out what our code we added and see if that works. That way we can see whether our code's causing it or if it's something else. Okay, so something else. So it's possibly, um, the only thing we changed is we added stuff here and we also added stuff here. So one of the two is messed up, so let's figure that out. Okay, I figured out what was going wrong. I did a little bit more research on why we're getting this error because I was not expecting this to fail at all. So it says async.next is not a function and the thing that's causing the problem, it's not what we have here. We can keep all this. In fact, we can get rid of this comment too. The problem is with our async. It doesn't want us doing async code. So as soon as I get rid of that, it works. So refresh works just fine. And we can just test it high too. See. Um, so it doesn't want us doing async code in um, this little bit right here before we give the async iterator. And it looks like just by default, 
doesn't allow async code and we need to do async code um, to fetch our channel and member so this is where I'm going to stop the video I need to do some research on actually how to do async um, stuff before I subscribe if you know how to do this I'd love to know please leave a comment below um, about how to do this I was thinking it was going to be super easy and I could just treat it like a regular resolver like I did down here I had no idea that um, it was pickier with subscriptions so do let me know if you guys know how to fix this otherwise we'll figure it out tomorrow thank you guys for watching and as always the code will be up on github